So I heard you want to beat the Lost Sector fast. What's good guys, it's Zen, and I'm here with your daily Lost Sector guide. Now I have over 4,000 hours in this game, so if you listen to these tips, we will get those runs going as fast as possible for you and get those exotics. Now all of the information I dropped throughout this video is super concise and I drop relevant tips throughout the entire video. So be sure not to skip anything and watch the entire video for the best exotic farm. I'll give some additional info about this guide while I show you how to get there. But if you want, you already know where it's at. Feel free to skip to this time to get right into the guide. Now I'm gonna be honest, this is one of the worst lost sectors to farm if you aren't already 1830. I'm kind of shooting myself in the foot by saying this, but I want to be an honest content creator. We will be getting regular seven or eight minute clears. So unless you really want a specific armor piece and don't want to wait for it to come back in rotation, this lost sector isn't worth your time. Just wait for a better one to farm. However, if you truly don't mind the extra time, then you are in the right place because today I will give you the best strategies for the fastest clears of this lost sector. This guide is new player friendly and I will be using a build everyone has access to. I will not be using any class specific abilities like barricades, healing rips, or dodging. This way the guide will be applicable to all three classes. Typically I make my lost sector videos with no exotic weapons to make the guide universally useful for all of my viewers. Whether or not you have certain builds unlocked, I want to be able to help. Unfortunately, this is impossible for perdition. Without using the exotic weapon used, your 8 minute runs can take up to 10. However, the exotic use is easily accessible and free to obtain. I will explain more about that as we discuss the build. And no worries, I still use no exotic armor pieces. However, of course, good exotic armor will increase your efficiency, so at the end of the run I will explain good choices if these options are available to you. And now that you know the location, let's get into the guide. Alright, so let's get right into the build. In this lost sector, we have to defeat two barrier and two overload champions. There is also a solar surge and overcharged fusion rifles. With all that in mind, we will be using Arbalist, a solar fusion rifle, and a solar sword. This will work just fine with a non-solar fusion or sword, but it will simply take too long without Arbalist. No worries, because if you don't already have it, Arbalist is easy to obtain. All you have to do is talk to Shaw Han at the Cosmodrome. He will give you this quest to complete, and it will reward Arbalist. This gun is amazing and a staple in all endgame content, so if you don't already have it, it is definitely worth grabbing. It is important to this run specifically, as it will trivialize the barrier champions and a mini boss too. Now for our subclass, we will be taking advantage of Void. Make sure for your super, you slot on Sentinel Shield, Nova Bomb, or Mobius Quiver. For your grenade, use Vortex. And you're going to want to make sure your aspects give you 4 fragment slots. For your fragments, use Echo of Obscurity to take advantage of invisibility. This will come into play and you'll see what I mean. We will be taking advantage of Devour, so slot in Echo of Starvation. You will want to use Echo of Cessation to proc Devour more often and make enemies volatile. Finally, use Echo of Persistence to increase your Devour duration. For your helmet, you'll need Special Ammo Finder and Solar Siphon. Solar Siphon will create those orbs that you need for Devour. And to clear this in optimal time, we will need some special ammo drops. Your gauntlets don't matter, but just be sure to not use something draining armor charge. To be safe, just copy what I have here. For your chest, use some void resistance mods. There are two wyverns in here that do big damage if you don't have these equipped. For your boots, use stacks on stacks and solar scavenger. Solar Scav will give us the ammo we need, and Stacks on Stacks will give us multiple armor charges for picking up orbs. For your class item, put on Proximity Ward and Special Finisher. We will be finishing several champions in this lost sector, and there will be adds nearby them. Proximity Ward ensures that we get the finish off with a nice overshield. This synergizes with our build as well, since we will also be going invisible and getting back to full HP with Devour. Finally, with Special Finisher, we will also be getting an important Special Brick Drop. Now that you know the build, let's get into the walkthrough. Alright, so the first thing you're going to want to do when you enter this Lost Sector is create an Orb of Power. Now I tried to do this by using my Fusion, but it didn't get the multi-kills off in time. So I went for a grenade, but then he just runs away from my grenade. <laughs> so what I recommend is you just sort everything down, but it's okay because you can just get your Orb right here. Now what we're trying to do is clear as many adds as possible. There's going to be an overload that spawns in the back. 
So you'll see I often head back behind this pillar because this is where you want to fight the Overlord. You don't want to fight him out in the open, like right where I'm standing right now. But again, I'm just clearing ads so it gives me an easier time with the Overlord and I'm always heading back right here. You see the Overlord is chasing me down. So now we got him ambushed. Boom, boom, boom. And he dies very easily. You see we have three armor charges. So when we get the finisher off, we'll become invis, we'll get full HP because of devour, and we'll get the special bricks because of special finisher. Then you'll head back here with your invis, take care of those hobgoblins, because you need to clear all these adds before the door opens. And killing the adds while the hobgoblins are alive is a little bit difficult because they are snipers, they do a lot of damage. So we'll kill this harpy. And then we'll just try to get some chip damage on this mini boss here with our Arbalist. Get two shots off, it's pretty nice. He's going to head up the stairs and he's going to go hide in the back of the second room. So we'll just chase him upstairs. And actually what we're going to do here is we're going to fire off some attacks on these goblins, throw a grenade. And now the second overload is following us. We're going to ambush him as well with our sword. Get the finisher off but we didn't have three armor charges so we don't get special finisher now the fanatics are pushing you you're going to kill them with your fusion rifle and they're very easy because they explode and it does collateral damage to all of them gonna take care of these goblins here and now we're running back for a little bit of special because there are actually two wyverns in this lost sector really bolstering that difficulty if they weren't here this might be a good farm but they add a lot of time to it so we're going to take care of them with our fusion, and that is why we went back for that special ammo. So we're going to do a little bit more damage to this Hydra here. And this is where that Void Resist mod is really coming into play. We get a heavy drop, but it really doesn't matter too much. We don't need our heavy anymore. Hydra's down. That is another thing that would be very difficult if we didn't use Arbalist. Really sucks that I had to go against my no exotic rule, but I, I had to make an exception for this because I don't want to say just don't farm it. So now we're getting chased down by the Wyvern, so we're going to fight him on the stairs. So we're kind of pulling him to us. I want to take care of this Minotaur so we're not fighting two things at once. We got him. So now we're heading back. Now, when you're dealing with these wyverns, you're going to want to keep some distance. Because if you are the optimal distance from them, you can just strafe left and right and dodge all of their attacks. They do have a lot of health though, so that's why I was saying this lost sector takes so long. But again, you're just going to strafe left and right, dodge all their attacks. It's fairly simple, and you have the void resistance in case one of the pellets does hit you. If you get hit with a full pellet, 9 times out of 10, you are just dead. So you're going to want to hold your distance exactly where I'm standing. You see he gets too close and I'll just back up. Get the finisher off. Very, very simple. Now we have no special ammo. I'm going to run up and sword these guys. There's a little bit of variance to this lost sector. You won't do the same thing every time. It kind of depends on what the ads are doing. Now we have the Wyvern chasing us down. I actually don't have a lot of special ammo, so I'm going to do whatever damage I can to him. He's not chasing me down, so I'm going to try to bait him to me. Get a little bit close, and then he'll start chasing you down. Actually, this guy seems to be doing whatever he wants. He doesn't want to come down those stairs, the second guy. So now we don't have any special ammo. We're going to run back and grab some. So we're going to stand right here, because while you're standing here, you could just peek shot him very easily, like, like a titan barricade in PvP. <laughs> you just weave in and out of cover, and you really can't do anything about it. So, second wyvern down. Now we're going to head back up, and we have two barrier champions to deal with. You'll see what I mean about how important Arbalist is here. If you just used, for example, a pulse rifle, that is the anti-barrier this week, these barriers would take so long to deal with, and you would have nothing for that one Hydra mini boss. This is just so important to use. I try shooting at his head, but as you can see, that isn't a crit spot. You're going to need to shoot that little chest, that little Iron Man chest cavity there. Now I actually have full sword, so I just run up, and I know that nothing's going to do enough damage to me. 
and I have the proximity finisher. So like I said, there's a lot of variance to this Lost Sector. You're rarely going to do the same thing for every single run. Shoot this guy down, and I'm just going to run up to him with my sword as well. Now if you didn't have sword ammo, you would just use your arbalest. It would just take a bit longer, which is fine. Well, there's one more add. This is one of the Lost Sector. This is also another thing that adds to the time. You need to kill everything before these before these doors open. So I'm going to take care of a couple of the adds because the plan here is to just melt the boss with your super. Now I'm using Sentinel Shield, a roaming super, so there's going to be a lot of things shooting at you. It's a bit different from Mobius Quiver or something like that, or Nova Bomb because you could just hold your distance. But I'm going to be close, so I want to clear the adds. So you see we do about half of his HP, and then I just switched to Sword. Now if you were using Nova Bomb or Mobius Quiver, you would just throw your super and then shoot him down with Arbalest. You don't need to get close. But yeah, it's, it's fairly simple. It just takes quite a while. So you see we got seven minutes. Now, of course, exotics will help your runs go smoother. So I'd like to recommend some for you if these options are available. Typically, I'd give a few options for weapons, but you'll really just want to use Arbalest for the fastest runs. For Titan, I recommend Lorelei Splendor Helm. Aeon Safe or Doomfang Pauldron. Laurelly Splendor is nice because if you ever get low health, your barricade charge will be used up and a sunspot will spawn at your feet. This sunspot gives restoration a powerful healing effect. Doomfang Pauldron is a great pick, mainly because we will be relying on our super for the boss damage. While in your super, if this exotic is equipped, throwing your shield at a group of adds will give you a large chunk of super energy back. If you chain this properly, you will have your super up for the entire boss damage, really trivializing the final fight. Aeon Safe is another good option since it has intrinsic special finisher on champions. This removes the need to collect armor charges. My top pick is Doomfang Pauldron as it will give you faster runs than all the other options. For hunters, I recommend Aeon Swift, Omnioculus or Orpheus Rig. Just like for Titans, Aeon Swift is a good option since it has intrinsic special finisher on champions. This removes the need to collect armor charges. Omnioculus is great because it gives you resistance while invisible. Sometimes the AI will fire off attacks right as you enter invis, so this will give you a bit more sustain. Orpheus Rig is my top pick because it gives you an additional shot of your Mobius Quiver Super, giving you much more damage. For Warlock, I recommend Aeon Soul, The Stag, or Controverse Hold. Just like the other classes, Aeon Soul will remove the need to collect armor charges since it has intrinsic special finisher on champions. Controverse Hold is good because when you land grenade damage, you get a bit of energy back. This will give you great grenade uptime. The Stag is my top pick. This exotic will give you resistance while in your rift. Also, when you get low, you get a large chunk of your rift energy back. This will come into play a lot when facing off against the barrier champions, and it will help with the boss. Now if you found any value in this video, a subscribe would be super appreciated. These videos are super in-depth content, and I try to make them as useful as possible to everyone, while also being short and to the point. I upload Lost Sector guides every single day as well as other good Destiny 2 and some Pokemon content. Either way, thanks for watching and good luck farming guardians. See you tomorrow for the next Lost Sector.